These virtual tour photos are made using a fast, cheap and easy step-by-step -step system that anyone can follow. I don't use any expensive subscription software like Photoshop, Lightroom or Topaz AI. Instead, I am only using one program and a plugin to color correct, remove the tripod legs and recenter the 360 photo. I am using a program called Affinity Photo and a plugin called the Best 360 Virtual Tour Enhancer Effects which costs a one-off lifetime fee of £90. So let me show you step-by-step step how the system works. To follow along this tutorial, I highly recommend using the Insta360 ONE RS 1-inch 360 edition. It's the best consumer 360 camera on the market today for virtual tours, thanks to its large 1-inch sensors and Leica lenses. I will leave a link to it in the video description. The 360 camera stand I am using is called the Best360 Monopod and there is a range of Best360 Monopods for any budget at best360.shop. I will leave a link to the shop in the video description. No matter which Best360 Monopod you go for, they are all going to keep your 360 camera safe and speed up their editing workflow because it's really easy to remove the thin tripod legs in editing. The magic ring will let me adjust the tripod legs between the wide and narrow tripod leg position so I can control how much of the tripod legs is visible in the final photo. So now that we have the same equipment, step one is capturing 360 photos. To capture the Virtual Tour 360 photos, go to HDR photo mode. Normal photo mode takes a single photo of the scene and HDR photo mode takes multiple photos of the scene. It takes brighter photos to capture details in the darker areas and it takes darker photos to capture details in the brighter areas. It then merges all of these photos together into a single photo to get the best looking photo overall. Set the file format to pure shot. Pure short photos contain more information about the photo than JPEG. Set the auto exposure bracket to 9 photos. This will capture the most information about the scene as possible to get the best overall looking photo. Set the exposure difference to the maximum plus minus 1. This will maximize the amount of detail the camera can capture in the brighter and darker areas of the scene. For each photo I take, I set the white balance manually so it looks most natural, not too cool or too warm. It doesn't really matter if I pick the wrong white balance because I can tweak the white balance later in editing. So now using these settings, I will move around the area capturing the 360 photos. I move one or two steps at a time, leave the room, take the photo from the Insta360 app, reposition the monopod and repeat the process. Step number two is to copy the files from the camera to the computer. So to do this, I will first make a new folder for my project. In this folder, I will make three new folders. The raw folder to hold the raw photos straight out of the camera. The stitch folder to hold the stitch photos from Insta360 Studio and the exports folder to hold the finished photos from Affinity Photo. Then I will take all the 360 photos from my camera's micro SD card and copy them into the raw folder in my project. Step 3 is to take the dual fisheye raw 360 photos from the camera and turn them into stitched raw 360 photos in Insta360 Studio. So now I will open Insta360 Studio, go to Open Files, locate the raw folder in my project and I will only import the DNG photos into Insta360 Studio. DNGs are the high quality photos and INSPs are the low quality photos but I can't delete the INSPs because the DNGs rely on the INSPs to work correctly in Insta360 Studio. The easiest way to import the DNG photos is to change the view to a list and sort the list by kind. Now all the DNG photos are together, I will select all the DNGs and click open. Insta360 Studio will automatically sort and merge the photos together. I can click on a photo to view it here it shows the 9 photos taken and the merge photo from the set of 9 photos and if there is anything wrong with the stitching results, I can go to the stitching tab to play around with the settings to fix it. Now I need to export the stitched photos. The easiest way to do this is to select all the photos, go to export, export 360 photo, locate the stitched folder in the project, click open, Choose original resolution, 
check export all exposure photos and automatic horizon leveling, then click start export. When the export is finished, there will be a folder for each 360 photo. Inside the folder will be a set of 9 DNG photos, one merged DNG photo, and one merged JPEG photo. Now most people think they can take the merged DNG photo into Affinity Photo, color grade it, and that's it. But this simply does not work because there will be a hard line in the 360 photo. This is what the JPEG file looks like and it's not very good quality. So instead, step number four is to HDR merge the set of nine photos in Affinity Photo and use the Best360 Virtual Tour Enhancer effects to color grade the photo with a seamless stitch line. Head over to best360.shop to buy and download the Best360 Virtual Tour Enhancer effects. I will leave a link in the video description. Double click the downloaded file and it will automatically open Affinity Photo and add the Virtual Tour Enhancer effects to the library. To HDR merge a photo, go to File, New, HDR Merge, click Add, locate the set of nine photos from the stitched folder. I need to make sure they are in ascending order, select them, click Open, uncheck Automatically Align Images, noise reduction and tone mapping, then click OK. Wait for the photo to finish processing and now Affinity Photo has merged the set of nine photos into a single photo. Now this is where the magic happens. Click the Virtual Tour Enhancer effects and the photo is automatically color graded with a seamless stitch line. Open the Virtual Tour Enhancer effects and there are some settings I can edit. I can use white balance to correct the color temperature, if there is fringing in the photo, then I can use defringe to pick the color I want to remove and adjust the parameters until the color cast is gone. There are two presets of defringe. In this photo example, this is the before and this is the after. I can use contrast to change how bright or dark I want the room to be. This point controls the darker areas and this point controls the brighter areas. I can move these points however I like, but the default setting is OK. I can use color to change how vivid I want the 360 photo to look. Drag the saturation slider left and right to add or remove color. I can use denoise to increase or decrease noise reduction, but it looks good in the default setting. And finally, I can use sharpening to sharpen the 360 photo. I can drag the radius and factor slider left and right to decrease or increase the sharpening effect, but the default settings are fine. Step number five is to change the center point of the 360 photo. So to do this, I will select the photo, go to Layer, Live Projection, Equirectangular Projection, change the heading to my desired center point, click Center Coordinate System, and now this is the new center point of the 360 photo. Step number six is to remove the tripod legs from the bottom of the 360 photo. So to do this, make sure the photo is selected. I will go to Layer, Live Projection, Edit Live Projection, look down at the bottom of the photo, select the In Painting Brush tool, make the width of the brush slightly bigger than the tripod legs, make a selection over the tripod legs, and the tripod legs have magically disappeared. Step number seven is to save the 360 photo. To do this, make sure the photo is selected, go to Layer, Live Projection, Remove Projection, then go to File, Export, make sure JPEG is selected, set the preset to Best Quality, click Export, name the photo, locate the Exports folder in the project, Click Save and wait for the photo to export. To preview the 360 photo, open GoPro VR Player, drag and drop the exported photo into GoPro VR Player and this is the result. To edit the rest of the virtual tour photos, I will repeat the process. So go to File, New, HDR Merge, click Add, Go to the next photo in the stitched folder, 
select the nine DNG photos, click open, uncheck automatically align images, noise reduction and tone mapping, then click OK. Wait for the photo to finish processing and now Affinity Photo has merged the set of nine photos into a single photo. To copy the color grade from the previous photo onto this photo, then I can select the Virtual Tool Enhancer Effects folder, press Ctrl C on the keyboard to copy it, go to the next photo, press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste it, and that's it. There is no other Virtual Tool workflow on the internet which will streamline color correction, removing the tripod legs, recentering the 360 photo, all in a single software. This is the fastest and cheapest virtual tool workflow on the internet, and the results are incredible. That's it for this video. Hit the like button if you learned something new. Drop a comment if you have a question. Subscribe for more 360 tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.